So anyway, guys, that's it. That is the Killer Flicks tag. I'm gonna tag Cody Leach. Durbin from Durbania, me and Lee's little minion were trying to mold him into a horror fan. In the words of the great Barney Stinson, challenge accepted. Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my Killer Flicks tag video. I was tagged by Cody Leach, and if you don't know what Killer Flicks is, it is a Facebook group that Cody Leach and Lee of Dum Drums have been so nice to invite me to be a part of on Facebook, so it's fun to be a part of that. And Lee of Dum Drums and Cody Leach have kind of been mentoring me, I guess. Is that the right word? Mentoring me? I don't know. But introducing me to horror films that I had not seen before. And so Cody Leach, I guess, decided to tag me in this tag video so that he can test my knowledge and see if as a student and as a pupil of his, am I really seeing more horror films and getting to know them better. So Cody Leach, maybe I can make you proud. Or at least laugh hysterically. I don't know. We'll, we'll see at the end of this video. All right, so here we have a list of questions. Let's go through these. Number one, who is your favorite vampire character, performance, etc. in a killer flick? My favorite vampire in a killer flick would be Gary Oldman from Bram Stoker's Dracula. That dude is just awesome. That's probably the best Dracula movie I've seen. And I think to this day, it is my favorite vampire movie. I mean, yeah, I have a lot of fun with Underworld and things like that, but I think that Dracula movie is just my favorite, and Gary Oldman has the best interpretation of that character. I freaking love it. What was the very first killer flick that opened your eyes to the world of horror? I'm going to have to say Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> that very, the very same movie. I mean, yeah, Cody and Lee have been introducing me to other things, and I think the first big thing I watched uh, for an analysis on my channel was The Mist, which was a lot of fun. But I think, like, the first real horror movie I ever saw was this Dracula movie, and I just thought it was awesome. And I think I saw it because I did a lot of community theater back in the day, and I was actually in the Dracula play, and I played this guy who had this really awful plastic knife, and I hurled it at the beast Dracula, and I killed him on stage. It was awesome until the final show where the script of the play was just so bad the guy playing Dracula was laughing hysterically he says laying there dead and I'm trying to be all like dramatic you know like I slayed the vampire and the vampire's on the stage laughing hysterically the audience is laughing hysterically didn't mean to have that memory come up today. Number three, so what's a really standout geographical setting for a killer flick, i.e. the thing is set in Antarctica? Any that you really remember and love for being so original? I would say for The Shining, the exterior of the hotels, like I, that was cool, like the whole setting and all that's cool, and that's in Oregon. It's actually obtainable for me to get there, like I could drive there, so maybe one day I will. I'm kind of excited about the prospect of that. Number four, what killer flick are you embarrassed to say you love? None. Nah, I mean, I like what I like. I don't like what I don't like. I mean, it's just Cody Leach had the same answer on his video, and I don't know that I could answer any better. I mean, film is subjective. I mean, either you watch something and you like it or you don't. I mean, there's horror movies I've watched that I don't like because they're dumb. There's horror movies I've watched and I like because they're awesome. So, I mean, that's just... I don't know. That's just that for me. Number five, there are a lot of killer flicks out there based on true events. Do you have a favorite? How accurate do you think that story is? I'd have to say my favorite is the Mothman Prophecies. I haven't seen that movie in a long time, but I know it was based on true events, and I remember really liking it when I saw it. It's got Richard Gere. It's actually a pretty intense movie. How accurate do I think it is? Not very. Number six, what director would you like to see crossover franchises and make a killer flick? Probably Christopher Nolan. If he's already done a horror film, then I need to go check it out. But I would love to see a Christopher Nolan horror film simply because of how psychological this dude gets with like all the movies that he makes. Can you just imagine like if he made a real scary horror movie, he would probably reach into your brain and pull out your worst possible fears and make you analyze them and think about them six ways till Sunday. That would be really interesting. Number seven, what killer flick movie was the toughest to watch? I would probably say for me the toughest killer flick to watch was Evil Speak because it was bad. 
Number eight, who's your favorite killer flick final girl other than Jamie Lee? You know, honestly, in most horror films, I find myself constantly yelling at the main character, whether they're male or female, simply because it feels like most of the events in horror movies occur because of the stupidity of our lead characters. That said, I'm going to have to say Sigourney Weaver because she's freaking awesome in Alien. You don't mess with Sigourney Weaver. Nine, which killer flick has scarred you for life? Pet Cemetery. Zelda. Never get out of bed again. Never get out of bed again. She's disturbing. 10. What killer flick has the most killer soundtrack? I'm going to go with The Mist because it has the weirdest, most stand out soundtrack to me of like any horror film that I've seen. I'm watching The Mist and all of a sudden I mean there's I don't know that it sounds like that. I'm not really good at music. But yeah, it's just this like fascinating soundtrack. So I think that one has stood out the most to me. Number 11, what is the single greatest kill in a killer flick? This one was really kind of hard. Um, at first, I'm remembering my childhood of killer clowns from outer space, and I'm remembering people wrapped up in cotton candy cocoons. That's that's pretty gnarly. And I never liked cotton candy, so that movie was just a real justification for me to continue to not like it. Uh, the other one is John Hurt, the chest burster scene in the first Alien. Now that's gnarly. But I think the one that takes the cake for me, and I don't know that you can actually call this a killer flick death because is the person really alive? But it was the Ash Android reveal in the first Alien movie. When the guy goes crazy and they take the baseball bat and knock off his head. And then his head is hanging on his shoulder by a thread. And all the, the milk and pasta is shooting out of him because he's an android. And then they have his head on the table. And he's, he's like disembodied but his head is talking to them. Yeah, I don't know if that's technically a death scene, but whatever. I mean, when I was watching that movie for the first time and I had no idea Ash was an android, that freaked me out. Number 12, what do you think is the best performance in a killer flick? Oh man, this was kind of hard, but I definitely had to put down John Goodman from 10 Cloverfield Lane. I mean, my gosh. I mean, you have a movie where you have three characters in one set. Like, that's it. One setting, three characters, and they've got to carry this movie. they got to bring you in. And John Candy... John Candy? And John Goodman just absolutely stole that from me. That might be more a thriller than a horror film. To go officially horror film, I also got to say Kurt Russell and The Thing. I had so much fun with that movie, The Thing, and Kurt Russell is pretty darn amazing in it. 13. What killer flick horror location would you like to visit? I want to visit the hotel in The Shining. That is where I would like to visit. And the fact is, the exteriors are the um, Oregon's Timberline Lodge. And I know this because I got to play a bad guy in a short zombie film that more than likely, I hear, is going to be entered into a film festival, a horror film festival that gets played at the Timberline Lodge. So... Yes, if that happens, I'm definitely going to be there and watch me play the dude that's more scary than zombies. Yeah, I play the dude that is more scary than the zombies. Number 14, are there any killers from a killer flick that you sympathize with? I'm going to have to say Gary Oldman's Dracula because for all the monster that he was and all the blood that he sucked and all the people that he killed and for the real monster that he really was underneath and being Vlad the Impaler even before, I'm going to have to say him because at the end of the movie, really what you find is he just wants to find love and he wants to find freedom from his curse so that he can rest. So that he can rest. Our love is stronger than death. I'm really not that sympathetic toward him, but it's the one that I could find that I'm the most sympathetic toward. So this was my Killer Flicks video tag. The people that I would now like to tag, I'm going to tag Jeremy G. Branch over at Movies Are Terrible. He's one of my earliest collaborations, so I thought, hey, that'd be fun. So Jeremy, tag, and I'm going to tag my friend Matik. Matik and I, we did some awesome Fast and the Furious videos back and forth on his channel and on my channel, and I thought... Hey, let's do this, Matik. Let's see your killer flag, killer flags, killer... <laughs> Gosh. Killer...
killer flicks tag list that's the word that i'm looking for so let's let's do this all right so those are my tags thank you cody thank you lee for tagging me this has been a blast so cody i hope i passed your test check out the other videos on my channel my movie reviews theological analyses ranking videos trailer reactions and all that stuff hit the subscribe button to become a durbanian and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when all those videos drop i'm durbin thanks for checking out durbania <laughs>